When it comes to back training, there are really only three main exercises you need to be thinking about. They're responsible for almost all the back growth I have seen in my lifting career. Let me cut through the noise. At the end of this video, I'll give you other solid replacements and alternatives that you can incorporate into your routine. The first exercise is the T-bar row, which has helped get my back much thicker. The upper back musculature, the middle trapezius, lower trapezius, and rhomboids are responsible for bringing your shoulder blades together, scapular reduction, as well as up and downward movement of the scapula. As such, we can primarily target these muscles using exercises like the T-bar row. For best back growth, we'll need some sort of row in our back workouts. The T-bar row is a phenomenal choice for a few reasons. First, performed properly, it provides a great stretch on the upper back muscles by letting your shoulder blades come apart and forward. It also loads the stretch position more heavily than a barbell row, since the moment arm increases as you reach into that stretch. As a result, you'll be exposing your upper back to more tension in the stretch. Studies done in the quads, triceps, biceps, and hamstrings suggest that the loaded stretch can increase muscle growth. And the upper back is probably no exception. The T-ball row forces you to focus on the stretch, since the plates touch your chest before you can get a full squeeze. The whole lift takes place in the stretch. Finally, since you're bent over, your erector spinae are working isometrically, which is a fancy word for working without changing length, to keep your back straight. What most people don't know is that the erector spinae actually insert all the way up to your neck. So, training those muscles is a good idea for maximum growth. As far as technique goes, use a narrow handle to get a greater stretch by letting your shoulder blades come around your back. As for all back movements, you should probably use straps to remove your grip as a potential limiting factor. Get your back as close to horizontal as possible for a better stretch in the lats. Only your arms, shoulders, and shoulder blades should be moving. Don't let your torso go up and down during the rep. Take at least a couple seconds on the way down, pause in the full stretch, and be explosive out of that position for bonus points. For thickness, few rows beat the T-ball row. No matter what, for overall back size, incorporate at least one row exercise in your weekly routine. Stick around until the end of the video for alternatives. We have thickness covered, but what about width? Well, if you want to get your lats wider, consider MyAdapt, the coach in your pocket. MyAdapt is a training app and uses science to optimize your training for you as an individual. It costs a fraction of the price of a good coach, but is constantly being updated based on the latest scientific research on building muscle. Go to myodap.com now to be emailed when it finally launches, and for the chance to lock in a lifetime discount by signing up early. For back width, we're primarily concerned about the latissimus dorsi and teres major muscles. My favorite exercise for these muscles is the lat pull down, specifically with an underhand grip. Since we're already training the upper back with a neutral grip using the T-bar row, adopting an underhand grip for the pull down gives us some variation. The lats and teres major's primary functions are shoulder extension and shoulder adduction. An underhand pull down trains these muscles through shoulder extension. Here are some key points for technique. Set the thigh pad as low as it will go while still allowing room for your thighs. Pick a machine that allows you to get a full stretch. On each rep, let your arm come fully overhead and let your shoulder blades elevate fully. Control the lead up for at least two seconds. Bonus points if you pause briefly in the stretch position, since that might cause more muscle growth. I like ending a set when I can no longer even bring the bar to at least my forehead. This will allow me to work a bit harder than usual and spend more time in the loaded stretch. Why didn't I pick the pull-up instead? Well, while the pull-up is a great exercise, it's a bit more fatiguing due to stabilization and a bit less flexible than the pull-down when it comes to the rep ranges you can do with it. That said, stick around until the end of the video. I'll give you a few alternatives you can use based on your equipment and preferences. Regardless of your preferences though, incorporate at least one vertical pulling exercise like a pull-down or a pull-up into your workout routine each week for hypertrophy of the lats, teres major, and just sick back width. Finally, there is one muscle we didn't address super well with just the T-bar row and underhand pulldowns, the upper traps. In contrast to the middle and lower traps that make your back look thicker and serve to adduct your shoulder blades, the upper traps are the muscles on the side of your neck that make you look like you lift in a t-shirt. They're primarily responsible for scapular elevation, meaning they don't get trained very well during rows or pulldowns. 
Indeed, while they get worked isometrically, again, meaning contracting while remaining the same length, during rows, these are pretty strong muscles. The weight you use for rows, or even deadlifts, typically isn't enough to train in close to failure isometrically. That's where my favorite shrugging variation comes in, the seated dumbbell shrug. Pick up some dumbbells, sit down, and shrug away. Since we're elevating our shoulder blades, we're training our upper traps. Dumbbells are a great time-efficient option, and sitting down reduces fatigue from holding a ton of weight while standing. As for all back and leg training, strap up to remove your forearms as a potential limiting factor. I like to adjust my positioning until I feel a deep stretch in my upper traps and only come up until the dumbbells touch my thighs. Both of these increase the focus on the loaded stretch. Two seconds on the way down, pause in the full stretch, explosive on the way up. In contrast to most trap exercises, failure is very easy to determine on this exercise. If you can't bring the dumbbells to touch your thighs anymore, you failed. Congratulations. With a triad of row, pull down, and shrugging incorporated each week, you'll be able to grow a huge back. My favorites are the T bar row, underhand pull downs, and seated dumbbell shrug. However, there are other variations you can incorporate. Here are some of my favorite alternatives. I would perform these exercises two to three times a week each for three to five sets each. As far as rep ranges go, bent over rows are usually best suited to five to 10 reps, whereas pull downs are a bit more flexible. If you like this eye candy, I've been sporting this whole video. Go to rascalapparel.com and cop some of your own. Use code WOLF at checkout for 10% off and support me in the process. This is the best gym clothing in the game. Comfortable, durable, and it looks nice. If you'd like to see me rank every back exercise from worst to best, click on this video here. Dr. Mile Wolf, we out. Listen up. I got a story to tell about a scientist. As if you don't already know, the original length of gangsters. He's the master of the lab, the king of the test, with his love for length and partials. He's the best of the best. Hey, yeah. He's got the theory, the knowledge, and the PhD in exercise science. He's the epitome. He's all about those gains, pushing limits every day, stretching muscles longer. It's the length and partials way. Whoa. Whoa. Length and partials way. Lengthen partials, lengthen partials all my life. Lengthen partials, short muscle lengths can get the knife. Dr. Wolf, he got the whole world in suspense. What on earth could he possibly say next? Lengthen partials, maybe, or long muscle lengths. It won't be short and partials, cause that don't make sense. Lengthen partials, lengthen partials all my life. An additional 10% hypertrophy Thanks to Dr. Milo Wolf Communicating his PhD Until the end, motherfuckers 